All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Colorado Springs in Colorado by John Register. How are you doing, John? Hey, uh, John, I'm doing great. You have a great name. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's, 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 so do it's you. really popping. It's really I know. popping. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very unusual name we have. <laughs> I presume when you were growing up like me, particularly, I, I mean, I, I'm originally from Ireland growing up, if somebody shouted, John, you normally just didn't even bother turning around because right, there'd be yeah. 20 <laughs> other people turning at the same time. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, uh, and so, John, uh, we've got a very interesting interview today. So you failed to clear a hurdle as you trained for the Olympic Games that led to a tragic accident and altered your life forever. And then... So could you just explain about that accident, then we'll go into more about what you did afterwards. Sure, thanks. Um, I was a world-class hurdler, ran for the University of Arkansas, was a four-time track and field All-American, and went to another Irish guy named John McDonald, most winningest coach in track and field history for NCAA. Um, and um, so I ran for him, went to the Olympic trials in 1988 and 1992, served in the uh, in, in the Gulf War mm -hmm. in the military. When I came back, I was training for my third Olympic trials. I was on my way to officer candidate school. I misstepped a hurdle in the 400 meter hurdle training session and I dislocated my left knee. That dislocation caused the severing of the popliteal artery and seven days later, I became an amputee. Right. So you go from top of the world to flat on your back and you're missing a leg now. Mm -hmm. And how do you, the challenges with that is what, um, what began, you know, kind of a, a different level, a different career, a new n normal mindset around it. Yeah. And, and then obviously after that, you know, you went on to, um, you founded the U S Olympic committee uh, or, uh, Paralympic military sports program. You've authored over 10 stories to impact any leader journal, your way to leadership success. Um, you work with business leaders to overcome, you know, adversity, and uh, and by the way, the you actually you went eventually and you won you won medals at the Paralympics, right? Yeah. So I, I, my wife really helped me in my lowest moment. You can imagine mm -hmm. your military career is done. Your athletic career is done. So are you done? And so she really undergirded me and said, you know, we're going to get through this together. Uh, it's just our new normal. Right. And when she said that, she really baselined my entire existence. So I did intern my service in the military. I started working for the military's world-class athlete program once I was once a member of mm -hmm. uh, and wound up swimming for physical therapy. Swimming led on to making the Paralympic swim team in 1996. Didn't even know there was such a thing as a parallel game to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. uh, saw athletes running and jumping on artificial legs. I had a leg made for running. And then four years later, I won the silver medal in the long jump in Sydney, Australia, setting the American record in the process and pushing the champion to break a world record because I tied his world record uh, during wow. the competition. <laughs> so yeah, that's fantastic. It was, it was and, the, and, fantastic. and I see here the, the leg is in the museum of uh, Olympic and Paralympic Museum in Colorado Springs. It is. So <laughs> we have Olympic City USA. Uh, yeah. It is where we house the, the stories of our Olympians and Paralympians. In the United States, we are synonymous. It's the Olympic and the Paralympic Committee. Uh, and so we have a museum and honoring of all of our athletes, but not just the athletes and artifacts, but how the Olympics has grown over right. the years, uh, the social connections that people make to the Olympics, the pin trading, everything that is around Olympic and Olympism and Paralympics and Paralympism is inside that museum. It's a fantastic mm -hmm. museum, most accessible museum in the world. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So let's um let's let's step back for a moment. So as you said, obviously when this happened, it interrupted like all your all your plans and every your dreams and everything right out the window. Uh so how do you how do you pick yourself up from a moment that's such a life changer? And these things happen in an instant, as we know, you know, as you know better than anyone. Um, how do you pick yourself up or even start the process mm -hmm. of picking yourself back up? Yeah, I really think it, be it begins with what is going on on the inside of you before the test even happens, because mm -hmm. we don't we, we think we know who we are before the test. We think we know how we're going to show up until the test is pressed upon us. And that's when we discover through our actions or inactions in the test 
of of our character. Our character is revealed in our times of testing, not prior to or afterward. We can change things afterward to uh, to come up on the next test. So how are we, we can look at how we have been in our lives when small challenges have come. You wanted to ask the young lady out on a date and she was you're fe- fearful if she's going to say yes or no, mm-hmm. right? And so that's a test. That's a challenge that, that's before us. But that leads on to greater tests that might happen later that's going to define our character. Maybe it's, it's an injury. Maybe it's uh, the death of a loved one. Maybe it's a... A, a promotion, or maybe it's a, it's a uh, you lose lose a job. It could be yeah. anything that's going to test and challenge our character. So I think that's the first thing we have to learn that know, and know that tests and challenges are going to come, mm-hmm. friction and irritations will come. So how we handle them is a test of our character and how we move through. I think the secondarily is who's in your circle, right? Who is there that's going to help you win when you can't even pick yourself up? When I was on the track and my yep. leg was looking like the letter L, it looked like a you know dislocated knee. Mm-hmm. I can't do anything for myself. It was my teammates that helped pull me up when I couldn't pull myself up. Right. And they continue to do so throughout my my life. So that teaches me some things, right? It teaches me who's in my inner circle, who are the people that are going to be with me when I'm at my lowest moment, and whose circle am I going to be in when they're at their lowest moment and we help each other. We will never allow people to fail. Right, um, and then I think you have to have some type of a of a belief system, a system that's in place. For me, um, it's very much uh, rooted in Christianity and, and, mm-hmm. and faith. Right, um, and I wanted to know at the end of my life, I wanted my God to say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." So I think we need to have a target of what we believe in our life that is greater than ourselves. So we know that we're going to be at some point that this event that has happened is going to uh, help liberate others. Then you find, you know, I built out the Paralympic military sport Mm -hmm. program that turned into Warrior Games. That Warrior Games then turned in was the impetus for Prince Harry's Invictus Games. Mm -hmm. So the pro that one injury that happened on the track later on in life starts a program for the 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 um, the Duke of Sussex. Right. right? It's 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 incredible how one life can connect with another, and Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what we have to honor in in those times of challenge. Yeah. And then obviously, uh, and there's a couple of things I want to come back on, but there's one other part is, so when you pick yourself up and you start back on the road, right, and you say, okay, I'm going to, yeah. uh, there's always, there's often that initial enthusiasm, like you got yourself in the right from you start, and then other obstacles show up. And it's very tempting to sort of go to quit at that point early on when these obstacles, how did you manage to keep yourself motivated maybe when you had early setbacks? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the easy answer is I always had something I was looking forward to. Right. Right. But what happens when we're looking forward to something is we're not managing the process. And so we're really not unpacking what we're really going through to help other people um, escape or not escape mm-hmm. is a bad word, um, to release from their their challenges. In right. life. Mm-hmm. And so what I came up with was a three step process of how we all overcome adversity. And this is this is my process. It's it's a process, it's not the process. Mm-hmm. And I think the first thing we have is we have uh, the, we we graduate or we hurdle uh, three things. The first one is the reckoning moment. The reckoning moment is hurdled when we realize we do not get back what we desire to have back after some type of trauma has impacted mm-hmm. our life. We don't get it back. But we hear people say all the time, man, I just wish things would get back to normal. If I can get my life back to the way it used to be, everything would be great. Right. But that's gone. And we stay in that eternal loop or that 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 loop until we realize it's not coming back. Yeah. Just so just on just on that, John, like how yeah. how hard, because uh, 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 that just seems to me like one of such an obstacle to overcome when you have to admit to yourself that it's never going to be the same, that nothing, right. that thing that you have to look forward, you have to look at a new reality. Like how... How difficult is that process? Well, it's 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 extremely difficult because we have these systems and we these thoughts and this pattern that we built in our life that has now moved uh, and is now act is now trying to access a different environment. The environment is the environment. Mm-hmm. So, say COVID happens, right? We we all the global everybody can understand that um, the environment didn't shift. It was how we showed up in that new 
reality. So the the environment of of the pandemic was that that was the environment that was the new environment. Yeah. So did how did I show up in that? What what did I have to bring into that new environment? Those that continue to say I just want to go back to the way it was hadn't brought the, their new apparatus, their their atmosphere into this new environment. Right, right. I, I just want to go back to the and it's not going to go back. It never does. So we have to understand that. It's it's very difficult to 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 move, but that's the that's not that's the the third least uh hard part to get in, in the model. All right. So what's the second? <laughs> the, the second hardest part of the model is now you once you have hurdled that adversity or that 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 hurdle that the the reckoning moment, you're now in the revision, capital R, lowercase e, capital B I S O N, right? The new you're in the new revision. You are thinking something can be different for your life. Uh, and it starts off, you, you start this rebuilding, you're, you're kind of reframing things, but you haven't made a commitment. The revision is is um, hurdled when you make a commitment to the thing that you know you have to do. Right. But there, there are three forces that are holding us back from it. Number one are other people. Other people who believe for us what we can or cannot do, which is based upon what they believe they could or could not do if they were in our no, situation. I right and so they're part of our ecosystem they're part of our inner circle and dreams are very fragile when we start we don't know if we can do them or not we just put a mark on the wall and we need to have that's why it's very important to surround ourselves with people who who can feed into our dreams mm -hmm. yeah and then secondarily it's 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 society mm -hmm. what is society dictated to us that makes us believe what we believe right i thought my wife might leave me because of my artificial leg uh -huh. i have one leg right. Where did that come from? Where did that thought come from? Uh, it wasn't an origination yeah. from inside of myself. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to implant that there. So society generally does that. And we can take that to, say, Halloween. Every Halloween, we start seeing these scary movies that come out. And the villains in those movies are generally people with disabilities. They're disfigured. Right. Either physically or mentally. Mm. So now when we see movies like The Joker or we have, you know, schizophrenia and we're afraid of those individuals, it makes it very tough to have a conversation around mental health. Yes. See, it's because we, we society has dictated that that's bad. We should be afraid of those people because that's what they put before us. And we believe mm -hmm. it. we paid our money yeah. to go be, a, be to, to, for the ticket to go yeah. to the movie. Um, just, just on, just on that, John. Just on yeah. the people thing, because I know the people. This is something that I think people struggle mightily with: is understanding the the ecosystem or the universe of, of people around them, and being more discerning, as you said. And like, who who are the people who should be in my circle? Who are the people who are feeding me the positive? Who are the people who are who are who are not? Maybe the people who are, as you say, giving you bad advice or or bringing you down. And I always think it's like if somebody, if you have that person in your life there that's not a positive influence, bring you down. It says something about it. rather than blame them, you have to ask yourself, why am I keeping that? What what is that yep. doing for me? Why am I keeping that person here? That's right. We can tell people um, if they're adding value to us. We know if they are or not. Mm -hmm. But what what we have to be honest with ourselves is is because that relationship might have to be halted, yep. um, or shifted, or changed. Um, or let go. It could, it could be any one of those those things. And we can usually tell a person by what follows after them because we're, we're all planting these little seeds. Mm -hmm. And when seeds are planted in the ground, they grow after their own kind. So if we're planting seeds of positivity, we're usually going to get positive, positive things that happen in our life. If we're, po if we're planting seeds of negativity, we're going to get negative stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. And so when people are saying, man, nothing ever works out for me. Nothing's doing this. It's usually because the seeds that are planted are producing that result. They're producing yep. that harvest, right? And you're, so, and yeah, exactly. And you're expecting that result. You're expecting that result. Uh, so, so we have to be very cautious because it's not just uh, the people that we have around us because those people have influence as well. And so it, 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 it permeates beyond those individuals of, of our circle because mm -hmm. those individuals connect with other individuals who I connect with. Right. And exactly. So it, it, it expands. It's a, it, like I said, it's a harvest. Yeah. Our, our people around us are harvesting. Yeah. Um, uh, and so it becomes exponential. Yeah. And so sometimes that, that's really hard. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to shrink your universe in order to yeah. grow. 
Um, and so yeah. you were saying, like, does the reckoning, the revision part comes when you've made the commitment, right? Or you've hurdled it, you've made the commitment to change. And what's the third one? So once we've made the commitment, right? Because mm -hmm. because the, the and the third piece, you know, because we said others, we said society. The third piece of that is I I'm the one that has to jump. Yeah, I am the one that has to attack the hurdle. No one else can do that for me. I've had some right. of the best hurdle coaches in the world. None of them ever ran a hurdle for me over hurdle for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I have to do that work. Once you've made that commitment, and when I say it's the old it's the old joke, right? When you have your breakfast in the morning, you have bacon and eggs. The, the, the chicken was involved in the process, but the, the pig was committed. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so a commitment, a commitment is something, and my definition is you cannot go back on a commitment. Once you've committed, you cannot go back. That's mm. the difference between wanting to, things to go back to normal and committing to something that cannot go back to the way it used to be. Right, right. When, I had, when I tell the doctor my leg has to be amputated and he takes it off, I do not get my leg back. Mm -hmm. We make a commitment. We do not get that back. So now we're into the renewal phase. And the hardest mm -hmm. part of the whole process in the renewal is the rebirth. Because the rebirth is the new, what I call the new normal mindset. Right. And here's how I'm defining that. New means no prior point of reference. Right. Okay. See? So we can't use old systems, old thoughts, old ideas to put into a new bucket to get a different output. Because if we if we are doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, it's the definition of yeah, insanity. insanity right. Mm -hmm. So why do we continue to do it then? Mm -hmm. So in the new, I have to learn how to manipulate a wheelchair to a prosthetic appointment because right. I've never worn a prosthetic leg. That is new to me. Yeah. Right. I have to learn how to walk between the parallel bars. I have to learn how to walk on a four bar walker around the hospital to get to gain my balance. I have to learn how to uh, go from the walker to the, uh, the the walker to the crutches, crutches to a cane, cane to free walking, free walking to running, running to jumping, jumping to a Paralympic silver medal. Mm. That process took seven years. I had to allow myself space and grace to grow right. in the new. Right. And oftentimes we don't do that. We don't give ourselves the space and grace to grow. We just want to do it right now. Yeah. I made commitment, therefore, I need to have it right now. Yeah. And and I think that's and I think that's part of it too, John, is now like unfortunately we live in this society, this instant society of instant gratification, of immediate, mm -hmm. everything's easy, everything's fast and stuff. So when what you're talking about, like a seven year journey, like for a lot of people, like, wow, seven years, like oh, that's a long time. Like um, how, how do you, as I said, like, how do you manage to stick with that commitment, particularly, and this is advice to people out there who maybe are bombarded with everything being fast and yeah. easy. Like, how do you, how do you slow down and feel like you're being successful or you're making progress? Um, but it's not going to be at this, at the, at light speed, right? It's not. And I think it's incremental is what we have to mm -hmm. look at. Number one. Number two, I think we have to, in the space and grace, we have to build in breaks and, and rewards for ourselves right. when we hit a certain marker to know that there is progress that is being made. And we have to say, it's okay that I'm not making the progress that, you know, somebody, some other person may have made. Right. Because this is my own personal journey. You know, it, it's taken me, my, my mother passed away in, in uh, December of 2021. Mm -hmm. And I'm still still struggling with it right to this right now i'm struggling with it mm -hmm. and you know um because i found out in the in the kind of the aftermath of it that she was my protector right you know yeah. and I'm, I'm discovering these things about her and her life so i even though it's been almost you know two years i'm still working through it mm. and that's okay you know yeah. and it's okay for me to say it's okay yeah and i don't have to 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 bow to the pervasive demand that says it's not. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I I I totally agree with you, and it does. I mean, and I think that's what's unfortunate today is that things reveal themselves over time. So if you're in too much of a hurry all the time, you're going to miss the you're going to miss the revealing, the unveiling, because you you've you've moved on before it's even happened. That's right. But when you're able to do it, and we can shorten the time frame. Yeah. Because I think some of the things that you said, John. Sure is the people that are around you, the yeah. people that won't allow you to fail, the people that can now empathize with you and say it's going to be, it's okay on this side can help you shorten that curve, mm -hmm. you know, the distance, if we're willing to accept it. 
and yeah. know that we can't get back what we what we've committed to. Uh, and so, and just, once we've done and it, just, sorry, just on the people part though, when you really committed to this and you started that journey, did people start to appear in your life? Of course, yes. You? There were so many people, you know, even my old coach said, what about the Paralympic Games, right? I knew nothing about the Paralympic Games. It was mm -hmm. a just whole new entity I had no clue about. And then all of a sudden there's this parallel path. Can we look for those individuals or through ourselves or through our relationships that find the parallel paths that we never would have seen had we not gone through mm -hmm. that commitment phase? Yeah. And I, and I think that's the part, I, I think that's the part uh, is is the beautiful part of it is when you do go through adversity is the people that who are presented to you, the wonderful people who you perhaps otherwise would never have, have come across. Um, and I think that's one of the, that's one of the greatest parts of it. If you're open to that, if you're open, right. Yeah. yeah you have, you have to be, you have to set the desire. I think you set your attention and the, the, the universe begins to conspire mm -hmm. to make those things happen. Uh, whether you want it to or not, I mean, it really, it's a desire. So it, it, it starts happening. Um, and once you've done the space and grace, now you are operating at a higher level because you've done the work. Mm -hmm. yeah. No one has to, you don't have to, no one has to tell you, you've, you've done the work. And so that's the resolve. That's the reason I call that the resolve. The resolve. Um, yeah. We are now operating in our, our full, authentic, intentional self life again, where we have made, you know, we've made the transition. And we can now celebrate and give ourselves final thing, the reward and the reward. It might be the silver medal that I won, yeah. uh, could be any type of thing, but we don't camp out there because my, my silver medal happened in 2000. Yeah. I think right now it's, it's 2023. Yes. Right? So we don't, we don't camp out there. What, what happens is it is a plateau for growth. It's a growth right. mindset. Mm -hmm. So I can, I get there, I celebrate, and then I, that now becomes my plateau for the next ele elevation of growth. Yeah. And I think that's a, it's a great way, Jen, because I love that part is like, you know, you've reached a point, maybe you've reached a new base camp, right? And this is yeah. it. And then you're ready for the next journey, but it's an onwards and upwards, onwards and upwards journey. And no doubt when you, your journey is now influencing many other people and you're now appearing in the universe of all these other people. So the, you know, the goodness just keeps uh, accumulating, right? doesn't it? Compounding. Compounding. And it's, it's a, it becomes, because you've done that work, it becomes now that journey is now an empathetic model mm -hmm. because right. I see where you are. You know, John, I know you got to make that jump. I know you got to make that commitment. I know it's going to be difficult that you want to go back to the way it used to be. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that struggle. I know that people are on are, are trying to hold you back. I know society has said this to you, but you got this. You can make that jump, and I'm going to be with you on the other side when you get to that rebirth to help you on the on the way. Yeah, very different conversation that we're having. Yeah, so that you just got to do it. Make it happen. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, and that's and that's the empathetic side of it. Yeah. Well, listen, John, this has been fantastic, and I, what, what great insights! All of John's information will be below this video. But before we go, John, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. So I now am a profess a professional keynote speaker. That's kind of my my life's work, and I also te teach other people how to tell their journey stories. So from athletes. Anybody that's in transition that thinks they have a story to tell, and I and I'm a kind of a no nonsense coach in that area, uh, right? I don't. I after work with me, I'm not going to guarantee you're going to have any type of speech because mm -hmm. your speech has to sell itself, right? right. So I'm going to teach you how to get there. It's up to you to, to sell it. So I work now with business professionals on how to hurdle adversity, amputate fear, embrace a new normal mindset to win the medals in their life. We transform adversity into advantage, and our mantra is to go forth inspire your world because go is your command fourth is your direction inspire is your vocation your because only you can do this work and world because your work is in your sphere of influence yeah it's fantastic i love it listen this is just awesome stuff john um if you're looking for a keynote speaker you know go check out john as you can see i mean what a phenomenal story what a great uh, storyteller too so thank you very much for today like i said all of john's information will be below this video so go check him out. So thanks again, John. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.